Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, uh, I'll be talking about how to you know, create your project and connect it and uh, deploy it. So, this is actually from Frentity homepage. Like when you go to frentity.org, you can see this one. Uh, and I prefer just showing the what it is instead of from my own terminal. I deployed one on stuff. I, I guess I'll I'll place the link uh, in the comments below. Okay, so now welcome to the channel. If you are new, please make sure you subscribe. I am Lax, I am a web developer. And this series talks about Frentity. So now take a look at uh, the commands here. So as you all know, it, it requires npm. So you can say npx Frentity create uh, and then the name of your project. And then it will create create uh, it will create a package of JSON. It will create the Frentity settings. Where is the core of the Frentity? Like you can uh, configure your project there in the settings for JS. And then it, it uses a Mars theme by default. You can use other themes. So themes are also packages. You have to install each theme as a package. And then you can see that it, it will install the dependencies. And, uh, now we can say if the project is created. So now you have to go to the uh, folder and then you can just, uh, you have to connect your source in the next step. Yeah, so this is the settings.js and there there is a setting you have to add to your source. So it can be the uh, your REST API URL or just the blog URL. And this is where the security and other stuff comes in. So, for example, if you're a WordPress, you can keep it like WP dot like a some domain, and so that the hackers doesn't have to find the real source. It doesn't have to be uh, the your same domain. It can be something else. Like it can be uh, you know source dot your website name, context dot your website name, like that. So that way. Hackers not going to see your uh, admin. The brute force attack will be minimized, and the people who visit your site they are going to see the frontity, right? So it's just HTML, so they cannot be able to inject something or hack into it. Either. So that's one thing to notice. And then it comes with a styled components, so uh, CSS and JS. So you can do this way or you can also use the, something like Tailwind CSS or Bootstrap. So uh, in the showcase, when you go to Frentity showcase, you can find two starter themes or uh, like awesome, uh, awesome.in, they have a starter theme, uh, they call the awesome theme and it has uh, Bootstrap. So it comes with the basic Bootstrap support. And in the other side, like you can see the, the recipe side that I showed you in the previous one. So that video, uh, that theme comes with Tailwind. So you can uh, take a look at that as well. And installing Tailwind, this doesn't take much time, right? You can say npm install Tailwind and that's done. Okay, uh, now see the deployment. So you, you have to build it and deploy it. So it has a server command as well. So it can run in any Node.js server. And you can uh, you, you can see, I, I deployed one in Heroku. You can try in Vercel or uh, any Node.js server will do. Yeah, that's it. So now let's see the performance. Like after this, how uh, it will look. So we are going to see the uh, performance in detail in another video, but this one is just like just to give you an idea. So, I created uh, this one. I'll see if I can open that. Yeah, so this is actually Frentity uh, starter theme, and I used WordPress News as a source. So, you can see the WordPress News is here. This is actually the latest news. So this is, I think,
think Chakra UI team, but I'm not sure. I, I think so. So, so this is, comes out of the box, and I tested the performance of this one. It, it's not that bad, and it needs some tuning because I just deployed it in Heroku. So you can try and you can fine tune it a little bit, and. I got a word from the Frontity team itself, uh, the official Frontity developers like the team. Uh, they recommend using caching. When you read their documentation, you can find the caching as well. Uh, because it's like the, the cache layer will help you serve the pages fast. And this one is by the awesome team. And it's they, they fine tune their, their site. And uh, actually, don't mind this uh, score of performance because maybe when you uh, Lighthouse uses the first, uh, uh, this is the score of the first time visit, right? I mean, the first uh, hit. So if you revisit the page and the second time, it may be even more faster. And you can see the accessibility is good and the best practices is you know, 100. You can, uh, I noticed best practices are always. Uh, high uh, when you use Frontity and in terms of SEO you can use uh, like Yoast and it comes or any other uh, your SEO plugins as well and you can optimize for uh, progressive web app but I think it's not required uh, Frontity comes with AMP support if you want you can enable it and then for the performance uh, if it is a second time that you, your scores will be good, but uh, Lighthouse checks the first time, right? It doesn't go and visit the cache pages. So uh, take this performance as a, just a, like a guidance. But don't take it like it's not the golden uh, or like what you call it. It's not the verdict of your site. Uh, though a lot of people consider like having 100% score is the best. It, it, it's actually not required. As long as your site loads faster, easy to you know, navigate and the user experience is good now especially on mobile on slower mobile connections and that's that's already okay so your, your visitors are going to love the site and you know now wordpress and you know frontity as well the images are loaded with the lazy loading by default and uh, the pages are rendering like you know call that as lazy fast right so that's it. That's it for this video. And in the coming ones, uh, I'll be talking more about like the limitations of Frontity, what you cannot do, and also uh, I can show you some of the level of customization that you can do. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.